Assalamu alaikum everyone. So in this session we'll be doing whatever we preached actually. So we'll be practicing practicing whatever we preach. Whatever the spelling is, practicing the preachings. So in the previous two sessions we had at least some discussion over the database and uh, then we saw some commands and their workings as well. So today we'll be doing in hands-on and we'll see how to run these commands, how to actually create a database and things like that. Okay. Any questions from the previous session before I start? Okay. So just tell me if my screen is visible. I have to explain you the things and at the same time I'll code the things as well on the screen. So I hope my screen is visible. Coding screen is visible. Okay. So first I'll exit and I'll show you so here I have exited and now I'll go into the databases. So I have to type the command in Linux sudo mysql. So it will ask for the password. So I'll be giving it the password. So now it showed welcome to SQL. So here I'm in the SQL mysql server. So I hope that you have done your settings as per your requirements if you're using Windows. So it will have different installation process and similarly in the Linux and Mac. So there are installation processes like that. The first thing that we have to do is to create a database. So now we are in the SQL. So in the previous session as well, I showed you how to create a database. So the command is create, then I'll write database and I'll write the name of the database. Let's call this database as AIML, Artificial Intelligence Machine Learning. So now I need to terminate this with a semicolon. Now you can see that it shows query OK, one row affected. So now I can show you what the database that I created. So there is a command show databases. We covered that in the previous session as well. So here it is showing you that there are some databases that I have been working with like AIML, MLD, Information Schema, MySQL, Performance Schema, SYS and things like that. So now I want to use this database. So there is a command use and AIML is the database I have created. So I use this. So now the database got changed to AIML. So now we can write and we can do the things that uh, on this screen, uh, on this database basically. So going back to the main screen, so I'd like to show you what we did so far. The first thing is we create a database. So the database is like, let's suppose we created something like this. So database, this will allocate us some space. And the thing is we named it as AIML. Now we'll be doing what is called as making a schema, making a database schema. I hope that you remember uh, in the, from the previous sessions that what schema means, basically setting up these tables. So I told you that we'll be working with IMDB dataset or database. So this is a database basically consisting of the uh, movie records. So the movies that have been like made, this is that uh, thing that we will be working on. So IMDB dataset, let me write something brief about it. So it's a dataset comprising of ta tab separated values and there are a lot of files, so we'll be working with, I think, six or seven files among them. And it contains uh, movie information. So this is the data set we'll be working on. So let's first uh, see how this data set looks like. So that's the first thing we'll be looking at, how this data set looks like. The tables that will be in the database. So there will be uh, seven tables that we'll be working with, seven tables. So seven table means seven relations basically that we'll be working with. The first table that we'll be working with is the table of actors. Okay, so this will be the first table of actors. So actors table will be like this and there we'll create what is called attributes. The first attribute will be ID, then attribute will be first name, then last name, and then we'll have gender. Okay. So these are the five attributes, four attributes that will be in the actors column. So in here, ID will be the primary key, if you know. This will be the primary key. Okay. Then we'll be having a second column known as directors. We'll create this. Just keep in keep the focus over here so that you know that how to create these things. Directors will be the. I think I should close this WhatsApp. So I'm getting some message. So this is the second table we'll be working with directors table. So what are the things that are in the director table? The first thing is again ID, 
basically the ID of directors. So it identifies each director uniquely. Then we'll have first name and the last name. Again here, we have this uh, ID as primary key. Okay, then we'll have another ta table of directors genre. So genre basically means what is the domain that this director makes movies in. For example, it can be comedy, it can be action, adventure, sci-fi or something like that. So we have director genres. So in this, uh, again we have some attributes. Again ID of the director, first name and the last name. So here again the ID is the primary key. sorry here I think I have written it wrong sorry so here the attributes are director ID that's the first thing ID will be there so director's ID then we have genre in which the director makes the movie and then the probability probability means like what is the frequency that director uh, is involved in making that types of movie so that it will be a number between 0 to 1 1 means like he only makes those types of movies and uh, for example 0.5 means half of the movies are comedy or something like that so here again this director ID it's a foreign key so I told you foreign key points to some other table so here this is the foreign key to this director table okay I hope that foreign concept of foreign key is clear for you so then we have a table of movies so when we'll be designing database so you have to do like this you have to make ER modeling I told you this is called as entry relationship modeling so in that a person will come up to you and show you or show uh, their data and then you have to create a database out of that first. So we are in the first phase of creating a database. So here we are dealing with the database of IMDB. So the first step is I am just mentioning the tables that we have. So we saw actors, we saw directors, we saw director genres, then we'll we see movies. So in the movies we have ID, each uh, movie has a unique ID. Then we have a name for a movie, okay. Then we have year in which the movie was released. Then we have the rank score. Rank score means how much people rated it. If you know that in IMDb, the rank is out of 10. So for example, the Shawshank Redemption, it has a ranking of I think 9.1 or something like that. So here again, we have the ID as primary key. These are the four tables, then we have three more tables. So I would like to just fit in these here. Then we have movie directors. Okay. So I'll create these tables over here. I have movie hyphen directors okay then there are only two attributes in this first is director ID and then we have movie ID so basically which movie was made by which director there are only two both of these are foreign keys both of this ID and movie ID if you see so this ID is a foreign key to directors table first so let me just zoom it out a bit so that you can see it so here it is a foreign key to this okay then movie ID is a foreign key to movies table if you see it over here so here it is like here I am making these arrows to show you which table is a foreign key of other table so then we have another table as movie genres so here I will make another table movie genres so in this we have again two attributes movie ID and then we have another attribute of genre so again this movie ID is a foreign key to the table of movie table so here I can just move this then we have a last table of roles I'll just create that over here so this is roles so which actor got what role so in this there are attributes like actor ID okay then we have movie ID then we have what role the actor got so these two keys actor ID it is the foreign key to this table and then this movie ID is the foreign key to this ID I'll just zoom it out so that you can see it can you see the whole schema that we created just now so in here we have seven tables and in, in each seven tables we saw there are some attributes and some things are primary keys and some are foreign keys so we made the schema accordingly accordingly so this is our schema so in which we have uh, uh, sort of created and we have to insert our data in this so you should keep this in mind again I'll just reiterate this actors it has ID first name last name and gender ID here is a primary key then we have directors in which we have three attributes ID first name last name ID is the primary key then we have roles as well so roles we have uh, actor ID we have movie ID roles and 
accordingly in the other tables. So in total we have seven tables. So so far what we have done, we create a database. So again just zooming it out. So we have created a database which we named as AIML. Okay. Now the thing is we have also created this schema. The schema that is visible on your screen, we have created this schema. Now we know that we have these seven tables. So now we have, this is sort of called as ER modeling. So we have modeled it. So before making any building, so what we do, we do some sketching. So this is what we do, we did some sketching. So this is uh, basically how I want you to learn is that I will take some real world problem and then uh, you will be able to grasp the things and how we are doing it in real world. I'm just taking this example so that it becomes concrete in your head. So how the things are being uh, dealt with in the real world. So we are done with the AR modeling and making the schema. Now we have also created a database and the command to that was create database and then we named it as AIML. Okay. Then the second thing we uh, did is we used this database, use AIML. So basically selecting this, we now are in that database in which we want to create all of these. Before going into this, I want to show you data, how these things look like. Okay, I'll show you the data so that is the screen visible, data screen visible? Okay, so here we have the tables, you can see that the actor ID is here, 8, then we have actor name, okay, then we have actor gender as well over here. So these are the attributes, these are, this is the data that we have in the actors. So if I move to the movies, let's suppose, so here I'll just zoom it in. So you have the movie ID, then you have this movie name, 7 train and immigrant journey. Then we have something, some other attributes as you saw that in the movies we are in which year it was released. For example, 2000 was the year it was released. This null value was basically, it was not rated basically. So if you just take a random value over, then here we have 55 as movie ID. Then Akasa, no Shima Yori, I don't know, it is some Russian thing. So this is the movie name, then the year it was released in, then this null value represents basically the rating it got. So if you again see the directors, so similarly we have these directors, this is director ID, okay. So this is the uh, movie genre they make, for example fantasy, horror, musical and things like that. Then we have the probability of making those sort of movies by the director. Then again we have the director names as well, in which we had the director ID and the movie ID, if you see this. So then we have movies, movies. Uh, genre in this we have movie ID and the genre for example 2727 movie number is actually a documentary uh, and it's also a horror movie so there may be multiple things in this so then we have roles so in here you can see this data so we have actor ID we have a movie ID and we have the role that the actor was given is at least the map of data some sort of clear so how this data is actually spread over across all the things is this clear yes sir. okay now we'll be again going to the coding window. Now we have the data with us. We sort of created this ER modeling. Now the step is that we want to create all these tables first, then we'll insert the data, okay? According to this schema. According to this schema, we'll be doing this and just keep this schema in the mind. So there are relationships as well as you saw that actor table, it's related to the role in the movies and director table, it is connected uh, to the uh, movie directors uh, by using the director ID, then keep these foreign keys in the mind. Okay, now we'll go, <coughs> we'll see how this select command works and then we'll make our, make things like this. So first table that we'll be creating is the table of actors. Okay, so how to create this table of actors is, so there is a command create. So now I'll be showing you the syntax as well. So we'll be writing create. It is not necessary you write these keywords as capital. It is not case sensitive. You can write them in small case L as well, but for the better readability, try to write in the capital letters as is the norm create because we are creating a table now. So when we create a database, we wrote database over here. So uh, when we create this table, just write this create table and then write the table name. So table name is actors. So we'll create this table name actors. Then we'll write the attributes. So we'll just put it like this. So we'll now write the attributes. So what are the attributes? If you see in here, ID, first name, last name and gender. So we'll write ID is the first attribute that we'll be having. Then we'll write first name. I'm just writing the shortcut over here, but, but I'll, when I'll write the coding, I'll be writing the full uh, name of this. So we'll be writing the last name, and then we'll be writing the gender. Okay? So now you know about constraints that we saw in the previous lecture. There is a not null constraint. As I told you that 
uh, there is, we also learned the concept data types. So we declared these data, we declared these attributes. Now we have to also declare data types. So we know this ID will be an integer. So we'll write int over here. Then first name, we know that it's in character. We'll write var care of 100. Okay. Then we'll also write again similar thing for here, var care of let's suppose 100 again. And then we know the gender is just a one character. So we'll just write character one. Okay, these are things. Now, we have to put constraint. So this ID, it should not be null because this ID, sh uh, every name should be with an ID. So we'll write a constraint, not null constraint. Okay, so then first name can be null. So you can write, it can be by default. Now this is the default value. If you do not give the name, so it will be taken as null. For example, somebody has only first name. Somebody only has last name. So you can allow these characters to be null. And for the gender as well, if somebody does not want to specify their gender, so it also can be null. So these are the default values if you see it over here. So not null here is a constraint. So you cannot uh, make a table in which you don't give ID. So it will throw an error. So now we'll make this ID as primary key. For that we'll write primary key, primary space key, and then we'll say ID. So we wrote in command of create, then we wrote table. So these are the keywords or we can say commands. Then we wrote the table name, table name. Okay, then we wrote these attributes. So these are the attributes, attributes. So I'll call these as these are default values, default values. If you don't give them, it will take as null. So this is a not null constraint, not null constraint. So here we made this as primary key. So it is made as primary key, primary key. So is the concept of how to create table clear? then I'll be creating a table if you are clear with this. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So keep attention now. So again, I'll be switching the windows. I'll be going to back to the coding windows and uh, where you will be able to see it. So here you saw that database got changed. So now I'll be just clearing the screen by, uh, you can clear the screen by uh, pressing the control L. So if I write a command show tables, so because I don't have a relation right now over here, it will show that that this is empty set, so there is no table actually. So because we are in the database, AIML, so in which we have to create a table. So first table that we have to, will create is the table of actors. So I have just written these commands over here. I'll just copy and paste it. But whatever I showed you on the tab screen, that is what we'll be creating. So here I'll be pasting it. So you saw that create table actors ID is integer and it is not null constraint, first name where care null, last name where care uh, null, then we have gender, then we have primary key. I'll just press enter. So you saw that query okay, zero rows got affected. If you now press show tables, so you can now see that there is a table. Tables in AIML, there is a table of actors. Is this visible? Is everybody with me? Yes. Because this is really important because I'll be uh, sort of interacting with you so that you understand the things. Okay. So again, I'll be making another table. So let's go back and see what are the other table that we can make. We made a table of actors. Now we'll be making the table of directors. Okay. So similarly, we'll write the same uh, same thing. We'll write uh, create. Then we'll write table. So write these as capital letters because this is a norm so that uh, it. Uh, uh, says that these are SQL keywords, so we can say these are SQL commands. Then we can write the table name as directors. Then we'll again add the attributes in the similar fashion that we saw. So I'll just take this create table. Okay, so where is it? So you can see it. So I'm just so you saw that create uh, table of directors again here. Uh, we have ID as int not null, so first name, last name, and primary key is the ID. Okay, so now again we have to create some, uh, if we uh, write the command of show tables, you can clearly see, if I write show table, so you can, oh, sorry, it should be tables, so it will throw an error because I just missed this. This is an error, so I can write show tables. So now we have two tables, actors and directors in here. Okay, so what we are doing is, we are basically following this schema that we created. So this is the schema that we're creating. So out of this, this directors is done. So we're done with this. So we're done with this directors and actors. 
so now we have to create where we will be putting a foreign key constraint i'll show you that as well so we'll create the table of director uh, genres so if you see this director genres we have a foreign key id which is to this uh, director id so here we'll do that so we'll write this create then we'll write table then we'll be writing the table name as director genres so in this we have again these id and this is integer and this is not null okay then we have the first name we have the last name so both of these are varchar so i won't be writing the things and then here what we have is again sorry i'm writing the director so i'll be id is there then we have genres not the first name last name so we have genres so in which we this again varchar then probability okay then if you see this constraint here so if you see in the directors genre here so i told you that this id is a foreign key to the table of directors so how to put that constraint that i wanted to tell you so here you have to write an addition line foreign key foreign key okay so what is the foreign key directors id is the foreign key this id so i'll write as did so did you have to write it like this okay and then you have to write in the references references so what is references it references the director table so you have to give table name and what is there there is an id so which is references to so to explain you this command first you will write this foreign key then you will write the name of the foreign key over here we have this foreign key you wrote the name name of attribute so which basically references something then you will write this keyword references then you will write the table name it references to table name it references to then you will write the attribute so this is the attribute it refers to attribute it refers to so as i explained to you the in the previous session what is the concept of foreign key so we have a table in which we have an attribute which sort of uh, uh, uniquely identifies some other tuple in some other uh, table so for that here is that id so this director id it uniquely identifies a tuple in the directors but this id actually is in director genre so we made it as a foreign key okay so this is the syntax if you see it over here so foreign key then we wrote the attribute then we wrote the reference then we again wrote the table name then the attribute name it refers to so is the concept of uh, this syntax clear the syntax of foreign key so then i'll be creating this table as well yes sir okay so now i'll be creating that table as well going back to the coding window and let's see let's just paste this command and you can see the create table directors genre everything that i wrote on the uh, tablet screen i wrote in, in the screen and here i pressed it again i'll press show tables so clearly if you see that uh, till now we have created three tables so similarly i'll be creating table of movies i'll be creating a table of movie directors and i'll be creating table for genres and roles so i'll create all these things as once because i don't think there is uh, anything to learn now so here we have these four tables that i would create at once so these are the four tables i created so if i now show you the tables show tables so now we have these seven tables and these are according to the schema that we uh, that i showed you previously so here is the schema and according to this schema i created these seven tables so till now we have just created the schema now we have to insert the data in this so is the select command clear how uh, is uh, is the uh, create command clear in database how do we uh, use this create command in sql so is it clear yes sir nice now the second step, step is that you can do one thing you can insert the data in these and before that i also want to show you one more command that's if you some mistakenly create a column let's suppose we want to delete these roles we want to delete the roles table that we have over here we have this roles table let's suppose we want to delete it so there is a concept called drop so drop i also explained in the previous session so drop you can write the i want to drop a table so basically i should write in the caps so drop table so what is the table name roles so i'll drop it drop means basically i delete this table so if i now write show tables so you can see that one table got deleted out of this but you know that i need that table i'll just create it again so i just wanted to show you the drop drop command if you want to drop a table at so here i have created that again 
show tables so clearly you can see that there are seven tables so now i need to take the data and i uh, need to see how this insert command works basically so again before insert data i want to again uh, tell you a uh, really important concept that you must know so that uh, you know what's the importance of these things so how to insert the data basically now you know that uh, this data it has some dependencies so i'll like, just go move the screen so you know this data is dependent if you see this so for example uh, if i just write if i make this roles first because you know that roles have two keys two foreign keys so it, these things should exist up priori so it, they should uh, exist up front otherwise we won't be able to insert data in the roles so the uh, so it is important to insert the data in order so it it is important to insert data in order in order so why is it important because there are there are dependencies okay the first thing is why is it important so i can just write so there is something called as referential integrity so referential integrity basically means if a table is referencing to some other table if that table uh, does not have the data which we are adding in the data which uh, which is basically referencing to so in this example uh, as we know that this uh, actor id and this movie id they basically are referring to the actor id and the uh, movie id in this so if we do not create these actors if we do not have data in the actors and if we do not have the data in this movies we won't be able to insert any data in this uh, roles so we should keep this in mind okay so this is the first thing we have to add uh, data in order so first thing is referential integrity should be there then again one other thing is that's called avoiding constraint violation there is something called as constraint violation so as you saw that we are putting different constraint on the attributes so in order uh, to sort of not violate that so we should avoid this so avoiding this okay so maintaining this should be maintained so we should maintain the referential integrity so we should avoid the constraint violation because we have put uh, some constraints over some attributes so for that we must insert data in order then we have something called as prevention of orphan records so there are something called as orphan records orphan records so what actually orphan records are so if you made an incorrect insertion so you made uh, some incorrect insertion uh, so the records in the child table that now that now uh, uh, sort of are there so they have they have no parent so in here so let's suppose this is a, this is a child reference so we have parent and child so in here if you made a record if you made some wrong entry over here so you made some wrong entry in actor id and movie id so but you know that this is some sort of child record if you see because this record must exist in actors and movies so if there is no record in actors and movies so it will give us some error so in order to prevent this orphan records you must insert data in order so before inserting data in roles you must have data in actors and you must have data in movies as well so if there is not a record in actors and movies and then you are trying to uh, assign it some uh, to some uh, uh, record to some roles then it will give an error so to prevent those orphan records so orphan record basically mean which does not exist in the parent table so here parent tables are actors and movies so child table is roles so if we add some record in the roles which does not exist in movies uh, and actors then it's called an orphan record so you must prevent this orphan records you must prevent it so i'm just writing some things maybe there are some other things as well so again maintaining data consistency that you saw while inserting so you can you have to also maintain data consistency consistency i hope these four things are clear why should we insert the data in some particular order so first thing is you must respect this referential integrity because you are referring to one table so it, this integrity should be maintained then there are some constraints so that should be avoided you should not have any constraint violation then we have orphan records you should not create orphan records then you have this data inconsistency you should actually maintain this data inconsistency data consistency sorry so you should maintain this data consistency i have been talking to the, talking about the data inconsistency since i think session 1 of the database now we know that we have to insert the things in order so what is the order that we should uh, insert the records in this because you know that actors directors and these movies they do not have if you see this so they do not have foreign keys so this actor it has no foreign key directors have no foreign key this movie has no foreign key so they have foreign key referencing to them but they, they are, their key, their attributes are not referring to anything so they do not have dependencies or anything so you can create them in any order so what we'll do is we'll insert the data first in actors table then in the second thing we'll uh, insert in the directors table or relation then we'll have movies 
okay now we have to uh, uh, sort of in insert this data in order because now we have to respect these four constraints at least four integrity and we should have reference integrity constraint violation should be avoided we should prevent these orphan records we should maintain data inconsistency because now directors are created and uh, you know that movies are also created so now we can insert director genre so the fourth thing is director genre these ta this table should be then uh, that this table should be inserted with the data then we have movie directors so because we now have the list of directors because it refers to this so after having these directors we are we're able to create this then we have the sixth movie genres and the last thing is roles so this is the order we'll be creating the we'll be inserting the data into okay so did you go to, got the concept of why to insert the data in order and why did we chose this order this particular order that's why you have to clearly understand the schema really well because you know that there is a parent child relation there is the uh, relation of this references and things like that so sometimes if you need to watch these lectures again and again so i will recommend you to watch because sometimes the things can get like we'll build on something and it can get tricky at some point so it is better for you to watch these again so there is nothing wrong in watching a thing again so here i hope that these things are clear for you so we'll be inserting data in this particular order okay so this is the thing that we'll be doing is it clear yes sir okay so now we'll be inserting the data so there is a command so that i'll be writing over here there's a command of insert insert command so that i'll be showing you I'll just write the insert first how to do insertions and I'll write the command and then we'll do the insertions. Okay. So how to do insertions basically. So you can write a command of insert. Okay. Then you will write into. Into is again a keyword of SQL basically a command. Then you will write table name. Then you will write table name over here. So whatever the table name is. Basically the relation name. Then you will write values. okay so you will write values then you will write the values over here for example it will be a list like this you will be inserting a value let's suppose we want to insert as we know that we have to insert the first thing in the actors we uh, that we just saw that there should be order should be maintained so that what you will write is you will write insert table then we will write actors as you know that actor has an id so we will write an id let's suppose 1 then actor has a first name and last name let's suppose it is michael and something let's uh, let's suppose Okay, this is the last name, and then we write the gender. Let's suppose male. So this is how we can insert the one record in this. Okay, you saw that in the values we must know the order. Otherwise, we have to give the columns as well. So what I what I mean by this is, so whenever you are inserting something, so if you are inserting without giving what are called keywords, for example, uh, you don't know. Uh, let's suppose I'll say that you don't know what uh, what uh, what are the attributes in there. So uh, you know that there is ID, there is first name, there is last name. and then there is gender so but you don't know the order of these things so you should explicitly mention this in the values then okay so in order uh, to maintain this if you have to for example this one should go into the id this michael should go into this first name this he should go into the last name and this male should go into the gender you must write this otherwise if you know the order so you can just uh, insert the records like this okay so uh, how i'll insert is i'll take all the things and you can also write multiple records over here it's not just for the one record we can uh, add multiple records in here so i'll uh, just update uh, the all the records at once so i'll just copy whole of the thing and going back to the coding window so here if you see uh, what i have done is i have inserted all the records so these are there are 1000 uh, actors so here i have mentioned it if i go these are the records i'll be inserting at the end i'll be putting a semicolon So if you saw that 973 rows actually were there, so we query is okay. 973 rows got affected, and in there we have 973 records are there. So if I again write show table, so we have these seven tables. So in the actors, I can write describe actors. So describe actor describe basically shows me. So what are the properties of each of the attributes? So if you see in here, actor has the field of ID, okay. so id basically is in type of integer and then first name it is type of var char then last name gender and null means basically is null value al allowed 
for this id null value is not allowed but for other values null value is allowed so here it is the primary key okay so id is this is the primary key so we also know that there is a default value if you do not put a value so everything will be null in here so you can also see here it, the default value is null but the constraint here is not null constraint so it won't be able to get this default value null because it is a primary key and primary key should not be null and it should be unique okay so now we sh we can select we can show you the data i'll just write a command you don't need to worry about this so i'll just write select star uh, from actors so i'll show you the data that we inserted don't write, don't think about this command i'll just show you something i i basically want to prove you that i insert the data so are you able to see the data into the actors table this is the data that we inserted i just have printed the uh, 10 rows out of this so this is how we insert the data so in the actors column so we have just written if you if you see that command what we have done is so this is the command that we wrote we wrote insert insert into and then actor act, table name is actors then the values and these were the values that we inserted okay again going back to the coding window and i want to actually update every record every table basically so then we have to insert the things in directors so i'll again copy whole of the thing and uh, press in control l so here we have all these records of directors so i'll insert them so you saw that this record got created. again you can see we'll see the select command basically i just wanted to prove you that i have insert the data select from so what is the name of this directors so directors table so let's put, we'll put the limit of 10 again so you saw that i again inserted the data in the directors table so you know that how many tables we have we have seven tables in here so in that we have actors, directors, director genre, movies. So let's see, is there a data in movies? Because we haven't yet uh, actually inserted anything in the movies. So let's see if there is a data in, in movies. So from movies. So if you see, it will show empty set because there is no data. Now we'll insert the data in the movies. So again, we'll take all the data and we'll insert it in the movies. And uh, there is some error, let's suppose. Let's show again, show data. Okay. Show actually tables, not data. Show tables. Show tables is the command. Okay, so, so we had this command of, sometimes it can get really tricky. So here we update the record, so we just, have the movies now you can select and uh, from the table movies and let's put the limit is 10 so now you saw that the movies also got added before this it was showing us empty now that you saw that how i inserted these records in the movies as well okay then again i'll be inserting the records in the director genre so i'll be just hastening the process up so that it does not feel boring to you so the directors now movie directors Okay, so now movie genres. Okay, so now at last I'll be putting the roles as well. Okay, now we have everything in the tables. Okay, now we insert the data in the table. So the command that I told you is, the command basically is insert, then we write into, then we write the table name, then we write values. If, we, uh, if you know the order, then you can just write this order thing. Otherwise, you have to give the column names explicitly. So is the insertion of data clear? How, how to insert the data? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Because I'm not able to see the screen because I don't see your thumbs up and things. Maybe it's a good idea to speak and unmute your mic if you want to speak something. So till now, what we have, again, just reiterating the things we know, we now saw how to create a database. We created a database. Okay. Then we added some tables. Added basically what is called as relations in relation database relations or tables then what we saw is we added some data added data or inserted that's called insertion of data into this so these are three things we did so far okay now we'll be doing because this is what we call as data definition language i think i showed you that how to define a thing so you saw that there are different commands in data definition language i think we used create we also use a drop so we would, uh, we have to uh, we'll again use update and things like that. I think that this, the concept of this is clear by now. So we actually read the theory in the previous session. Now we are just implementing the things. So this is what comes under the data definition language. So what are, we have defined database, then we have 
uh, created and used it and then we insert we made some tables and insert some data into it all of this is creation of the database okay is it clear yes sir nice <coughs> now comes the real sql how to basically select and how to basically uh, retrieve the data i told you uh, what a database management system is it makes our retrieval of data easy then manipulation of data also becomes easy so for that now we'll see different commands the first command that we'll be going through is a select command the select command select command so this is the command that we'll be going through and we'll see how to select the things because as you just saw in the uh, i think beforehand i use some select command so now i'll be going in depth how to basically use the select command so this select command is used to select or retrieve the data from the database now we have these tables how many tables are there seven tables and there is a data in those tables so if you now want to retrieve the data so you should use the select command so what is the syntax the first thing is i'll and explain you the syntax so what is the syntax of the select command so first you'll write select then here you'll write column names the columns that you want to get okay it can be column 1 column 2 column 1 comma column 2 or maybe whatever you want and then you will write from then you will again write the table name over here so here it will be a table it will be table name look how easy sql is you just it's like plain english as as i told you that is a declarative language you have to declare something you will get things out of it that's why it's really easy and it hardly takes i think less than a week to uh, sort of understand it But why I did why I gave you comprehensive lectures for this so that if you are uh, building some websites if you are even doing data analysis if you are doing some other thing you know what is going underneath the hood okay otherwise like just telling you the command this retrieves the things it doesn't make sense for you so this is what I am telling you select is the command by which I can retrieve data retrieve data so what's the syntax I'll write select then I'll write these column names okay then I'll write from then I'll write the table name in which uh, in, from which I want this okay. So if I again here, if you put the, if you write select and you write star, star basically means give me everything. So if you if you have done some maybe bash scripting or some Linux coding, so the, if you write uh, open star, or let's suppose I want to open something in a VLC, I'll write a VLC star. So it will open all the files in that particular folder. So here in the similar thing, select star means select every column, select every column in the table and from the table name. Let's let's uh, start with that. Let's start with uh, select. Uh, start from movie and we'll see what are the column and we'll st uh, we'll see actually basically uh, take hold the data from the movies and we'll take all the columns let's go back to the coding window okay okay so here i'll write select from movies so select star basically means select everything from movies so if i just press it so it will give me the movies that we have over here so movie you know that movies has id and then movies has a movie name then it has it has the year in which it was go got released then it has uh, the rating as well so these are the four things as you saw that the here we have 812 rows in this so that's how uh, how this is how we retrieve the data all the data but if you want to just select some columns in the movies let's do that so if you want to select some columns you can write select not just star you can write let's suppose uh, name you can write name and comma rank score rank score is the other column so you want uh, get these two uh, columns only from the movies so i hope that let's 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 just put so i have the screen is visible i wrote select name rank score from movies so select is the command then this the, this is the column name this name then rank score is again the column name this from is again a keyword movies is the table name so if i just write it so because i have terminated with uh, semicolon so you saw that i only got two rows this time okay Now, if you do not want to uh, list all of the things, all of the things. For example, here we have eight hundred twelve records. You want to basically maybe ten, twelve records. Just get the hang of the data set. You can just put another command of limit. So you can write limit. Actually, this again should be in the capitals. There, this, there is no case sensitivity, but I just want you to make a habit of putting these keywords in capitals. So let's suppose I want ten rows out of this. I just want ten records out of that movie table. So I'll press enter. So you saw that now we have ten records. So you saw a table on the screen. Here we have the name. Okay, we have the rank score. Okay, then we have the names corresponding to them, and we have the uh, corresponding scores as well. So did you got to know? We uh, we just learned how to use select and how to use limit. So there are two things that we learned for now. 
Okay, so we saw how to use select and with this select we also use limit. So limit is a command. So in SQL limit works. So I think in other databases there is a similar command to the limit. So I think it is a percentile or something like that. So but in MySQL limit works. So you just have to document the things if this, this limit does not work on your windows or something. Okay, so limit 10 basically means show me the 10 records. You can just give the argument. So here we saw how the select works and the table works. So you can get the column names and then you can also get hold of the table. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's suppose we'll select <coughs> genres from the movies. We'll also do that. We'll select genres from the movies. Let's go back to the coding window and we'll write select. Okay, so if you see in the genre in the genres table, so it do we have that table? So we have what is called as movie genres. So if you want to just show what are the tables, you can just again press show tables so that you know the database. So here we have this movie genres. So if you now want to know what is the uh, attributes in this, you can just press describe. Then you can press movie genres. Here it has movie ID and genre. So I want to actually get the genres of the movies. Okay, so here I'll just write the genre of the movies. So I'll say select. Then I'll say, let's suppose genre and I'll suppose from and I'll say uh, movie, what the table name was, I think movie genres, movie genres, let's give this as a command, I think this does not exist, so we have to check again what are the table name, movie, movies, basically it was movies. So now you saw that there are a lot of tables in here and these things got repeated. So if I just want to press uh, first 20, I want to get them, I'll press limit. Let's suppose 20 things that I want to get on the screen. So I just wrote a limit and here are the 20 things that I got. I got documentary, short, comedy, crime, western, comedy, family, animation, comedy again. So did you saw repeated values? Because there are some repeated values as well. Are they visible on the screen? So here, what I have done is I have, I again, I'll again give the command. So I have selected these genres from the movie genres. So when I press, I'll just give it a limit basically. So limit of let's suppose 20. So it should be movies. So here are the 20 uh, genres that we got the, for the first 20 rows. So did you saw there is for example this comedy here is that uh, again we have comedy then uh, maybe <laughs> somewhere else. So there's a repetition in these things. So uh, are, you, are you able to see the repetitions? So if you want to get distinct values, for that we have a command with select called as uh, select distinct. Okay. So if I will go back to the coding screen and let's suppose here what I wrote is I wrote select genre from movies. If I write select distinct. So I'll write select distinct. So then genre, now I'll get only distinct values. So you saw that there are only distinct values in here. Documentary, short, comedy, the, uh, the values are not repeated. Is it clear now? So what we saw is, we saw the select command, then we saw the limit, and with this, we again saw select distinct. Select distinct. So you saw that I don't write spellings wrong on the keyboard, <laughs> but maybe I'm really bad at writing, so I write spellings wrong in here. So, uh, so is it clear? So we can also write select distinct if you want to get the distinct values out of the things. Okay, maybe you can also write select distinct from director IDs and things like that. And uh, let's suppose I'll again write select distinct here. So to get the head, uh, hang of these things. So we'll, so I wrote select distinct name and year. So I, name and year should be distinct from movies. So I'll just again put a limit because there can be different so I'll put a limit of, let's suppose, 5. So now you saw that I got the movies which were released and which had the names and uh, the release year was different. Okay, so this is the usage of the distinct keyword, how you can get this. Okay, basically what it does is, I'll just go back uh, to writing. The, what distinct does, it eliminates, it eliminates duplicates. So it eliminates the duplicate records and retrieves the unique values only okay it basically simplifies the output sometimes uh, you want uh, no duplicates in your retrieval so for that you can write this select distinct command 
okay i hope this is clear now now you can use the while clause with this uh, we are just discussing select and we are building on the select we have create database we insert the data in the database and then what we did is we selected the data and now in the retrieval we have something called as while clause while clause so what is this while clause so now you want to put a condition in here for example you are selecting something let's suppose i am saying select so let, let's let's first see the syntax what is the syntax of this so syntax or the while clause is you will write select and then you will write the column names whatever you want you will write column names okay then you will write from and then you will write table name then you will put a while clause so while clause is the clause and here you will write condition let's take a real world example how do you want to do it for example if you want to see which movies were released let's suppose uh, before uh, 2010 so you want to see which movies are released and you let's suppose you are a fan boy of the movies which are maybe in black and white or something so you want to see which of the movies are uh, released in the year which were less than 2010 uh, so here you can put a condition in here so what i'll write is select so the column i'll write the movie name select the column movie names from the movies table where the year is less than let's suppose 2010 so i'll write that command over here is the syntax clear is the syntax of yes, how, how to use this while clause because now we want to put something so you will be uh, continuously retrieving the data out of this so i'll go back to the coding screen and now i'll paste this much of code so you saw that i wrote select name and year i want to see the movie and i want to see the year it was released from the movies table if you see that here i have written from the movies table so i have written a while clause and the condition here is year should be oh, so year should be less than let me just press control c and year should be less than 2010 so if i now execute this command so you can see these are the movies which were re released before there are a lot of movies so let's suppose i want to limit the query and i want to limit it just five results let's suppose so now you can see that these are the top five results i got 28 and then train immigrant journey or things like that is it clear is this concept of like uh, the while clause clear so how to use while clause with this select command so maybe you can you can again use a command for you want to see the last name let's suppose i want to get the first name and the last name of the directors uh, which has the uh, last name as smith let's just write the comment uh, this query select the first name and last name from the directors table where the condition is last name should be smith i don't think there is any director with the last name smith so it should give us empty record so here you have you got the empty set okay Okay, let's suppose I again uh, will write while clause because uh, let's suppose we'll write we we want to get the male actors all the male actors that are there. So what we'll write is we'll write select the first name and the last name from the actors table where the gender is male. So you saw there are a lot of actors. If I want to limit this, I'll just put a limit over here. I'll just put a limit. Let's suppose I'll put a limit of let's suppose ten. So here you saw that these are the people who are male actors in the actors table. Okay, I can use the uh, and I can use and or operations with this because these conditions you can put everything. So you can use logical and or operators, and then you can use arithmetic and relational operator greater than less than. Let's suppose I want to use this equal to operator with this because I have now used this equal to operator. Let's suppose I want to see which of the movies that got released in the year 1995. So here I have used this equal to operator. Okay, so you can use this condition with the. a relational operator with the arithmetic uh, not just arithmetic maybe uh, with this uh, logical operators and or and not so here what i have done is i have i want to see what are the movies that were released in 1995 and what is the thing that i want about these movies name and the year so if i just press enter and you can see so these are the movies that got released in 1995 okay is my screen visible i, I are you sleeping are you alive okay Let's suppose you want to watch a movie which has really very high rating. So let's suppose if you want to want to watch a movie which has the rating, let's suppose of greater than eight point five or something like that. So what I'll do, I'll write select the name of the movie, and uh, I'll say where the rank score basically is greater than eight point five. So what I'm writing is select the name and the rank score from the movies table 
where the rank score, where the basically the rating it got is greater than 8.5. So these are the movies which have higher rating. For $40,000 is one movie. Then there is a movie named Zero, 9.8. Then we have 10 from You, Show of Snows, 8.8. Then we have 1001 Nights. And uh, they have got the rating more than 8.5. These are the four movies that have the rating 8.5. So first thing, we checked how to use an equality operator. Then we saw how to use greater than operator. Similarly, you can use the less than operator. Maybe you want to see what are the movies that got released before 2000. So what you can do here is, and here, here, are, the movie, here are the list of movies which got released before 2000. Well, let's put a limit. Uh, let's put a limit over here. Mm. Oh, I just exited <laughs> MySQL. So again, I got a chance to show you sudo MySQL, again the password. So now what I'll do is, I'll put a limit over here of let's suppose 10. Mm -hmm. So need no database select. We have again database AIML. Okay. So now I'll be able to I think read these things. Limit let's suppose 10. So these are the 10 movies which were top 10 movies which were released in uh, years before 2000. So there are a lot of movies. I just want to show, show you. You can use equality. You can use greater than, less than, and anything with this wire clause. And you can also use not equal to, and this is an interesting case, you use not equal to, because not equal to is having a different index. You want to get the movies which were not released in 2005, let's suppose. So for that, how will we write it? We'll write it like this. So not equal to is like this. You have to write these two tags, angle tags. There is not that not and equal to. So this is the syntax uh, that you have to be careful about. So here you want to use this not equal to. What are you saying? Is it visible now? So what I'm saying is if you want to use this not equal to, so here you have this unique symbol. This is the usage of not equal to here, these two angle braces if you see it. So if I want to see the movies which are uh, released uh, not in 2005, so I can just write and there will be a lot of movies, so I'll just limit these things to let's suppose 10. So these are the movies that were not released in 2005, okay? So you can also write, there's a there's a thing between, I told you, you can also write between. So between is again a command, so, so I'm not getting your voice, so what are you saying? Okay, is it clear now? Okay. So what I'm saying is, so we have we are trying different operators with this wire command. So we saw greater than, we saw less than, we saw equal to, we saw not equal to. We have other special commands like between and like. So I'll just uh, first show you what is how this between works. So how this between works is, so if you want to get a value from certain thing, to, so you'll write a command between, between some value 1 and value 2. So you'll write like this, and value 2. So this is the command. So you'll write everything that you have the command and then if you want to put a constraint wire condition. So you'll write between show me all the values which are between this value and that this value. Okay, if you want to see the movies which are made uh, between let's suppose uh, 1950s and 2000 and we can do that. Going back to the coding window and I'll show you there. So what have I done here? So between let's suppose 1950s and then let's suppose till 2000, okay? So we'll see what are the movies that are between in this period. So there are a lot of movies in this, 471 rows if you see this in here. So there is, it is written 471 movies are made in this. So you can also write between. So between gives you the range of values, okay? Then you have a beautiful thing called as like, okay? So what this like means, let me just go in here and show you what this like works as. So how this like works basically is, you will write everything and uh, after this wire clause, you will write like, okay? You will write like and then you will write what is called as wild card. You will write wild card entry. So what is a wild card? Let me just explain you what wild cards are. So there are different types of wild, uh, wild cards. So first wild card that we'll be going through is basically a percentile. Let me just find these things. So we have different wild cards. The first wild card is this percentile symbol like this. Keep, keep the focus over here because you will be using it a lot. So there are something called as regular expressions as well. So how this percentile works. So suppose you want to get a name whose uh, the name should start with A. So you will write like 
let's suppose I will select names will select select names from actors table from actors table wire then we'll put a condition wire when we put in condition wire like then we'll write this condition like so how the name should look like so we'll say it will start with a then percentile this percentile says this it represents zero or more characters so a then it should be followed with zero or more characters you can write this percentile like this it should be anything then at the end you can have a it can be like this percentile a b start with a and with b then in between it can be anything okay it can be like this as well so percentile anything then a then again anything then it can be b then maybe anything so there can be there should be a and b in between so is this person to consider percentiles clear so if you put a percentile in the while clause this has a specific meaning these are called wild calls so these represent one uh, zero or more characters okay so let me just show you uh, an example to get the understanding of this thing i'll show you an example with a percentile so maybe we will uh, visit these wild cards again so for that maybe we will visit them separately as of now we'll show you how these things work so for this what i am writing is select the name from the movies where name is like so how is this name this this name should look like a and it should end with a let's just get the names we start with a and then at the end it can be anything so you can press enter so you will see that these are the movies which got uh, which start with a okay so there are eleven movies let's suppose i want a movie which starts with a and let's say ends with k so what i'll do is i'll say a then percentile means any or zero or more characters then it should end with k and if i write it you can just see there is only one move and one movie which starts with a and then ends with k so these are called as wild cards so you can put the like command over here just focus on this like command so this is the like command that i wanted to show you so select you did a select and then you showed a name from the movies table where the name should look like this it should start with a it and it should end with k is the like command clear how do we work with like command and is this usage of percentile clear yes sir nice there are different wild cards maybe i'll just make a list of them and maybe i'll um, go through them quickly afterwards but i want just uh, cover the uh, different command so if there is also a command which you can use in wire is that's called in how is this in used if you want to see the movies which were made in let's suppose 1990 comma 1998 and 2000 let's suppose these are three values that you you want list all the movie names but the year should be either 1999 or 1998 or 2000 so movie year should be one uh, one of the these one of these three and you want list all these movies which are released in these three years for that you will write for let's suppose select and then you will write column names whatever you want to get from then you will write table name the table that you want to get it from and then you will write where where is the and then you will write condition 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 is that year it should be in what should be it in 1990 or 1998 or 2000 so this is the command you will write so you write the select so select what you want to select i want to select the movie names let's suppose year as well and i want to select it from movies because i have a movies table which we created and year basically should be 1990 or 1998 or 2000 so this is the three so i can write this command as well to show you how to use this in operator as well in in operator uh, with the where clause so this is the conditional so this is the conditional of while while clause so going back i can just clear the screen and here i have written select the name and the year from the movies where the year should be either 1990 it should be 1998 or 2000 if i just run it so these are the movies that were either made in 2000 even you can see in the year so these movies are either made in 2000 or 1998 or 1990 this is how i can use the in command is the usage of in clear yes sir so what have we seen we see, we saw the usage of uh, less than we saw greater than we saw not equal to we saw less than equal to greater than equal to you can use everything and then we saw between then we saw like and we saw in you don't have to memorize anything of these you just should know that these things exist because you won't be memorizing it for your life so whenever you want to use them you just have to do a google search and it, they are just one google search away so so you should not memorize the syntax so syntax should not be memorized in any cost
So syntax should not be memorized at any cost. So you just should know that these things does exist in SQL and you, ch you should try it how to write uh, between command and what is the usage of between command. Use the documentation for that. I just want to introduce you to the concepts that exist there in SQL. Okay, I hope that till this we have uh, done a lot of commands still here. Uh, uh, there are a lot of commands again pending. I'll go through them and but I'll here take a break of 30 seconds maybe to take some questions from you if you have. Do you have some questions? I think there are very less people who joined today. I think we are missing four or five students. I don't think you have any questions. Let's 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 do one thing. I'll ask you a question. So I'll write select. Mm, let's write select. And let's suppose I'll write first name. Okay, and then I'll write from. I'll write actors. Screen. Screen is not visible. So I'll write select the first name from actors. So what should get printed on the screen? First name of actors from the actors table. So if I just print it. Okay, there are first, these are the first name of all the actors, okay? Let me do one thing, let me ask you a question so that you tell me the query about that. Can you please mute? Huh, so, I'll ask you a question and you tell me the query about that. So this is question for you. Okay? I want to select movies. Select movies uh, for which a rating is greater than let's suppose 7 I have to select movies and the rating should be greater than 7 and they should they should have been released released before uh, let's suppose 1998 so what is the command can anybody tell me the command so what should I write I want to select movie names basically I want to get the name of movies and uh, their rating should be greater than 7 and they should be uh, they should have been released before 1998 Umar what's the command that I should write because you know that there's a table movies so I'll again show you the schema if you don't remember the schema <coughs> here is the schema so here are movies table in which we have a name so what's the command that I should write tell me so the command select, select. So select name from movies year less than Name date 1998 from movies then we are less than 1998 where what should be less than where year year year. Uh, year should be less than 1998 and and there should be another condition and and the rating of the movie uh, we have mentioned that as I think rank score or something rank score is greater than 7 so this is the command which I'll run and it will give me Select it will give me the movies which have ratings greater than seven, and they have been released before 1998. Is this clear? I think that you at least are getting the things how to retrieve the data out. Yes, we are just in the select command. We saw different things. Okay. Nice. So now we'll be going on to what is called as order by. So order by basically if you want to sort the things. So I'll write order by. There is a clause called as order by clause. Let's write order by. So what is it doing? This order by clause, it is used if you want to get something sorted, if you want to get a sorted result. Okay, it is used with a select query. So select query because when you are selecting something. Now you want to order it in a particular order, either ascending or descending order. So you can do that with this sort with this order by function. So what is the what is the syntax? Sorry. So what is the syntax of this? So here again you will use select command and then you will use column names. Okay, then you will use from. Then here you use the table name. Why am I writing it again and again? Because this should get ingrained in your head. Then I'll write from table name. Then uh, what I'll do is I'll write order by. Order by. 
so order by these column let's suppose i selected column one over here so i'll write column one okay if i want in the ascending order i'll write ascending or descending so i can write ascending or descending okay so here if i select column two i can again add the attribute so if you want to get the uh, movies and you want to order them uh, by in the increasing order of their let's suppose year so you want to get movie names and you want to get the year they were and, and it should be in the ascending order so what i'll write is select and i'll write the select name of the movies and i'll write the year in which they were released i'm selecting these two columns from the movies table order by order by what order by year so i'll write year here and then i'll write ascending or descending let's suppose we'll write descending so i'll just write this command switching the screen is the command visible so what i wrote is select then i wrote the two column names name and year from the tables uh, movie table and then i am saying order by year and descending put in the descending order so the latest movie that got released should be in the uh, should be first then uh, followed by the movies so i just limit because there are a lot of movies i limit it let's suppose with just 20 things with just 20 so if i press it so you can saw so here the latest movie in our database is released in 2014 so it's really an old database so you can update it anytime you want so 2014 is the latest movie that we got and then we are we have 20 uh, 2006 2005 2004 it basically got That's ordered these these movies basically got ordered in a particular order if you see it in here okay we ordered them on the year so again showing you the same command so you saw that so we are putting the limit of let's suppose 20 so we are saying select the name and the year from the movies and order the results that you give us but in the descending order of the year okay so i'm pressing it and you can just clearly see we're getting the descending uh, descending order of the year okay we can put an ascending order as well so you can just write ascending in here uh, you can also let's suppose if you want to select first name and last name and, and you want to select in the ascending order let's again do that switching back to the coding screen and what i did is i i just wrote select first name I just clear the screen so it's visible. I, I wrote select first name and the last name from the actors table and where the last name it should be ordered by in the ascending order then the first name should be descending order. So what is the meaning of this if we are using the two columns basically. So let me go back to the screen and I'll show you. So if we are uh, doing something by two columns. So here you saw that I'm just ascending it by I'm just ordering it by one column. So let's suppose if we are sorting it if we are uh, so sort of ordering it by two columns so what will happen is if you write column one then you will write ascending order okay so uh, then if you write column two and you write again ascending order so what will happen is it will first check the column one it will sort everything based on the column one but if there is some sort of collision what i mean by that is if there are two things which have same order then it will go to the column second and it will res resolve that collision let's suppose sometimes uh, the, uh, two people have name umar so if i want to sort everything uh, by the name so everything will get sorted umar and let's suppose we have some uh, names with start with a and something and when two people have name umar which umar should come first let's suppose we'll use the second column age we'll say whoever is the ha is elder that should come first so we'll just write the second age and uh, let's suppose one has 25 then one is 21 let's suppose so if you want to sort if you want to order by multiple columns so how will they resolve it the f everything will be sort of ordered in by by using the first column but if there is a collision like this if there is a collision we have these two omers then we'll go to the column second let's suppose age in here then we'll resolve that collision and we'll see whoever has the greater age that will get uh, the first priority if we are uh, using the descending order uh, in the second column so here in the uh, if you see the command what i have done is i have said that select from uh, select first name and last name from the actors table and what order should be there order everything uh, in the last name but if there are if the last name is same then use the first name to resolve that collision if i just press enter in here you saw that everything got sorted so let's just take uh, let's suppose limit of 20 so here are the 20 things that we saw so everything was uh, sorted in uh, descent uh, i think it was ascending order so we initially got v and then got point and then got some other names as numbers so if there was a collision then it will be resolved based on the first name again see this command so we have select the first name and we have the last name 
from actors order by last name it should be in the ascending order and then we have the first name it should be also in the same we can also put in descending order let's suppose we put the descending order over here okay so let's suppose we put a limit of 20 again so you saw these things is it clear so how to you how to you how we are ordering by using multiple columns so other column will only be used if there is a collision otherwise we will just order the things by using the first column is it clear okay I don't know my camera got stuck is the camera stuck there are a lot of difficulties in the camera let's see what is happening with the camera if it is not working it's okay still Maybe I can fix it in the next lecture. It's not a problem issue here because the camera is not necessary. So what I can do is I can also sort by alphanumeric. So but what I what I mean by alphanumeric is if you have an if you have if you want to sort uh, these uh, names in some dictionary order. Let's suppose I want to get the names who are, who start with A then B then C. So I can also use select a name from these movies and and then order by name and use the ascending order. Let's suppose we'll just run this command and show you. So you can see check it. I'll just put a limit so that these things are visible on the screen. Limit of 20. Is it visible? Sure. Okay. What I'll do is I'll just remove these cameras from every screen. Okay. I hope that these things are clear and how to sort these things. You can order by rank score and everything if you want to get the ranking the thing so there are a lot of functions there are a lot of examples that I can show you but here I will sort of stop this order by and we'll move on to the next things that are there uh, that are possible there with SQL so here we'll move with the different things that are possible with SQL so again I showed you you can with this while clause you can use and by and I mean you can I think from the class first if you know if you have seen the Python you can put multiple conditions and you can use or with the while clause you can also use not Okay, you can use these sort of things in SQL, and uh, then you can combine all of these together. And you have also saw uh, see you also you also saw how to use less than, greater than, equal to, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, between. Then you saw how to use in. You saw how to use like with the while clause. Then again, just by now you saw how to use order by and things like that. You saw a lot of things uh, today, and then we'll move on to the next things. You also saw constraints, not null constraints, and things like that. And uh, you can update the table as well. Now, if you want to updation, now you can do updations. There is a command of update. So what this update does? Now you know that we have created these lot of tables. We created an actor table. We created directors table. So, but if you want to enter a, enter and the record, you want to update the things. And sometimes you want to uh, you have a record and you want to change some things into that. The first update, if you want to uh, add another row for that, we have insert command you can use insert you know that but if you have some values and you want to change that value let's suppose in the actor name you want to change some last name okay you want to set uh, some column name so what I am uh, by updation I mean if you have a table in that table I have a row and I have different attributes let's suppose I want to change this attribute I want to change certain attribute that's called updation if I want to do some updations on that so you have seen how to create and then how to insert these things now if you want to update the things you can also do that so for that, if you want to see if we have a movie, let's suppose I will see the movies and then we'll set the score for that movie. Let's go to the coding window and we'll see some different movies and we'll just update some score. Let's suppose we'll select name from movies. Let's suppose we'll put a limit of 10. So these are the movies. Let's suppose I want to give the rating to this movie, 1000 reward, this is a movie name and I'll give some rating to it I'll give I'll change the rating if I want to check the rating of this movie maybe I'll also check the rating so but I, what I can do is I'll write a command I'm going back to here I hope the screen is visible so what I have written is update movies so here you can see the up movie you can see the command movies let me just explain you it first on the tab and then you can see what I'll write is I'll say update okay then I'll write table name here I'll write table name table name should be there then I'll write a command set 
okay then i'll write column for example i write column whatever the what are the column name is let's suppose column one then i'll write the what are the values that i want to operate i'll write values for let's suppose in the column one i want value one then comma I, in the column two i want some value two things like this then i can also put some condition wire some condition this is the syntax of the update command so i'll write this update then i'll write the table name in here then i'll say set set is again a keyword then I'll write column one's value is this, column two's value is this, and the condition is this. So here we have, uh, we want to see the, uh, we want to update something. Let's suppose the movie's name is uh, Matrix, the Matrix. And I want to update the rank score of that. Let's suppose I allowed the Matrix, but somebody has mistakenly given the zero rating. So what I'll do is I'll write update, then I'll write table name because this is in the movie's table. Then I'll write set, and I know that the column name is rank score, rank score. Then I'll write is equal, let's suppose I'll really loud it, I'll put 9.0 over here. Then what I'll write, I'll write a wire clause, wire, this name is equal to the matrix. Okay. So this is the update, is the command, then this is the table name, table name. And here it is the column name, this is the value that we want to put. And here it is the, uh, again the movie name, movie name. So here, this is the column name rank score. This is basically the ranking or the score it, it got. So this is the command update movie set rank score is equal 9.0 where there is some condition. This is this whole thing is the condition. This is the condition that we can put. Going back to the coding window, if you just run this and you can see if I run it, it just showed zero rows matched because there was no uh, movie matrix. If the uh, movie got matched, then only these rows will be affected. Okay, again showing you this. So here it showed rank. Uh, this, uh, nothing got affected because there was no movie as the matrix. The, it searches uh, among all the database if there is a movie. If there is no movie, then it does uh, it changes it. Otherwise, it does not. It will not affect the rows. So I hope that you saw how to update these values as well. Okay, maybe you can also change the record. For example, if you see if there is an actor whose actor ID is one two three, and then you want to change his last name to Johnson, and how will we write that? You can just write update actors and set the last name of the actor Johnson whose ID is one two three. And you can, you can see that here, the row got matched. So one row affected. So if we use uh, sort of write it select, and then you will write, what do you want? You want last name, last name from actors where uh, ID is equal one, two, three. It should be Johnson. So you saw that last name is Johnson. Let's just change it. Uh, let's see if there is an ID one, two, five. Yes, there is, it's na his name is a mod dt something like that so here his name is mod if you want to change it so what you can do is you can just write update actor last name let's suppose i'll put umar as his last name and then i'll say where actors his id is one to five so it got That's updated why is it switching automatically so what i what i told you for example if i want to see what is the actor whose id is one to five so you saw that his name is Omar right now. So if I want to update it, let's suppose I want to give it name Zahid or Amir, let's suppose. So what I'll write is, I'll write update actors, set the last name. Let's suppose I'll write Zahid now. And I'll say whose ID is one to five. If I press enter, one row got affected. Now if I again print it, you saw that last name got updated to Zahid. Is the concept of this uh, updation clear? Nice. Okay. Then we have a concept of deletion. You can delete as well. So I'll write delete. So I'll write delete. So what is the meaning of delete? In this statement, it removes one or more rows. So you can remove one or more row. You can remove one or multiple rows by using the delete command. You can do this. You can sort of, if you want to remove some, if you want to remove a record in the table, you can do that. So what is the syntax of delete? First, we'll go to the syntax, then we'll see something. So then we have the syntax, the first syntax. The thing we have is here, you'll write it like this. Delete, then again, you will write from, okay? Here, you will write, a you will write your table name, table name, okay? Then you will write maybe wire condition because you will delete on some condition. You write wire, then you write a condition over here. 
So delete <coughs> from then a table name, then where, then condition. This is how you delete. Let's suppose I want to delete all the actors whose age is let's suppose greater than 60 or greater than 70. So what I can do is I'll write delete from then I'll say actors. So here's the table name is the actors. I'll say delete from actors where name not uh, not name and I'll say age where age is let's suppose greater than 60 years. Okay, and we can just delete these actors from the actors table. Okay, you can execute that command. Let's suppose we'll execute the command and see what the results. You can see the rows that got impacted. Pressing Control L here. Let's suppose we want to delete the people who have age greater than 60. Let's suppose. Be very cautious with the delete because it will remove the data permanently. So here I am willing to move the data permanently. It's okay. So unknown, there is no column basically age in the actors column. So that's why it shows uh, these either because we don't have in uh, you can just write describe actors. Describe actors. So that will show you what the attributes in the actors. So it has first name, last name, and gender. Let's suppose we want to just remove the gender while it's male, where gender is equal to male. Want to remove all the male actors. Okay. If you press it, everything will be deleted. Again, there is a constraint. Why? Why does it show it? Because we know that uh, it has a foreign key constraint. So you cannot delete or do this because this uh, actor. If you if you delete these rows, you know that uh, these actors ID it, it it is referred by some rules and other tables. For that, you have to set what is called as cascade delete or something. So for this, I just want to show you the delete. So the reason we were unable to delete a thing in here because this table actually was referred by some other table. So there is a constraint called as foreign key constraint. So this constraint won't let you delete the things. Is this clear? Why, why didn't at, uh, why didn't that row got deleted? If we if we wrote this, delete all the actors who are male because the, it was referred by some other table. So we must set these things. So there is something called as cascade on delete. So whatever got deleted, whatever should be get deleted in here. So delete that in the child table as well. So we'll also go through that. What is meaning of the cascade delete? What is meaning of the other things? So here I want to show you the uh, basically the working how to delete something. Is it clear? So delete, then you write from, and then you write table name, and then you write a condition. So this is how delete works. So it basically permanently deletes a thing. Be really cautious and use the while clause if necessary, like wherever you want to delete. So you can also use select and because if you use select then you will be able to see what are the things in there then you should you should uh, you should delete the things otherwise do not try to delete things other because they will get deleted permanently i think we have still some time left so we can also write what are called as aggregation commands so they are called aggregation things aggregation aggregation so what is the meaning of aggregation if you have so if you have seen numpy session in that we saw something called as aggregation functions so again the similar concept is here you can find the minimum value you can let's suppose the find the maximum value and you can again uh, find the count count basically the number of items you can find the count you can find average okay then uh, you can find sum all the things you can find what is the minimum for example if you want to get the minimum value minimum let's suppose the year in which the movie was made you can do that what is the syntax for all of these the syntax is similar you can just write select then you will write one of these functions let's suppose i'll write minimum you write minimum and then you will write column names in here column names this is the additional thing then again the similar old from and table name so what are you saying for example in the you can write year here i want the minimum year so you can write any column attributes so again check the syntax Syntax is write select followed by this minimum any function among these mean max count average sum anything anything like this then you can write the column names over here again the same old from then you can write the table name let's suppose I want to get uh, uh, the minimum year the movies were released in what is the uh, first year in what is the year in which the first movie was released so I want to do that what I'll write is I'll write select minimum year from movies so I'll go back to the coding window show you that so here I wrote written select minimum year from movies. So if I see, just press enter, you can see minimum year was 1897. So this data set contains the movie from 1897. You can also see the max. So let's suppose I'll put max over here. Mm, it should be, I cannot go here. So let's press 
let's write it on my own select and then I'll write max I'll see the latest movie that is in there and then I'll write here then I'll write from movies table I'll just put it like this so maximum so the uh, so the newest movie that we have is the latest movie that we have is in 2014 that is in our database okay so the, did you saw how to use this min max did you understand the syntax now you can also use count again the same condition so uh, you can also use while clause with it let's suppose uh, you're using count let's count the IDs how many how many persons are there how many people are there in uh, in actors so you can just press select count count basically will count all of, all of these people which are uh, from the actors because we know that each uh, ID is unique so we'll get the list of actors so if you see so here we have 973 actors are there again showing you this so you saw the count ID is 973 because you know that ID does not uh, did not get repeated if you want to see uh, let's suppose count last name maybe last people may have the similar last name so you again saw that there is no guy who has uh, who there are no two people who have the same last name so here you saw that how count is used you can also use sum let's suppose I want to sum all the scores all the all the ratings of the movie so what I can do is I can just write uh, select sum rank score from the movies what I can do is you can just write it like this so you saw the total sum is 893 is it clear or are you sleeping okay so you saw how to use these aggregation functions we call them so you can aggregate things why they call aggregation things because we have we are uh, putting something in aggregation you're taking a whole column and applying something on that so there can be advanced things that can be done with this but I just want you to know the basic stuff and in the assignments you'll explore what advanced things can you do with this so maybe you also want for example let's see what is the average rating that a movie gets so let's suppose I, I want to see what is the average rating that a movie gets so for that I'll just put select average rank score from movies like this so 5.6 is the all over average let's suppose I want to see what is the average of the movies which were released in uh, where year is equal let's suppose 1995 I want to see the average rating of these movies select the average because I think I don't think people used to rate the movies back then will still see what is the value Here we, have, we got 5.85 so you saw that 5.6 is the overall average but the average in particular year in 1995 was 5.85 let's see in the 2000 what is the average movie so this uh, can give us, give us a guess uh, was the quality of movie increased let's suppose in 1998 oh yes you can uh, you can trust on 1998 movies because there you got a good rating you got average rating of 7.16 so in 1998 the movies were made really good so let's suppose in 2000 you saw that again 5.25528 like this 2014 the, there's only one movie I think so it has null score so it was not rated so is this clear is this uh, the, is the concept of uh, aggregation functions clear how can you how you can use these aggregation functions with the wire as well so again showing the syntax so you can use the select command and you can use this min max count average sum then you can use column name from and again you can put a wire clause over here if you have some condition so how many of you feel that the SQL is so simple just raise your hands and uh, tell me that we feel that SQL is simple. I think only Amir is listening. Uh, maybe Salim is also listening. Omar, if I'm. <coughs> so uh, these things are really simple. Like uh, my teacher used to say that CS stands for common sense. So he said that CS <laughs> it it does not stand for computer science, it stands for common sense. So what makes it difficult is because you have to learn a lot of simple concepts. Then it becomes a lot hefty for you and it becomes a lot, uh, I'll say, like humongous details and then you have to sort of remember these things. But if you go in depth, if you learn everything from bare bone basics and you will feel really everything is common sense. It is not that the scientists are some other people and they love to do things and, uh, and they have to spend a lot of time. They do have to spend a lot of time. But what is the benefit? They were born before us. So maybe if I was born before the SQL I discovered, I should have discovered SQL. This is how I like to read the things. I want to see if I was not, I was present at that time, should I be able to discover it? Let's suppose I was present at the Newton's time. Should I be able to discover gravitation? That, that's the understanding you should have of the things. So when you feel I have that sort of understanding, I can discover it myself. If the people are not there and I was born earlier, so I should uh, be able to discover it. Then you can say that yeah, you at least have the understanding of the things. 
this is how I, uh, I also try to learn. I want to rediscover the things. So I want to rediscover. So by the rediscovery, I mean if I was present at the time, let's suppose Leibniz, Newton and these things were there. And right now I am doing calculus again. So we are, we are doing calculus in plus one, plus two. But how I am doing calculus again, I am thinking if I was at present at that time, I should be able to come up with these calculus formulas by myself. That's the understanding I want uh, you guys to have. So you should be able to discover these things yourself. If, uh, for example, uh, nobody came, Ten Trichy was not there to, um, let's suppose, invent C. If uh, Linus Storwald not was not there to create Linux, uh, will, will you will you be able to do that? But for that, you must have good understanding. Okay, so we saw how these aggregation functions work. This mean, max, count, average, sum. So there are other functions that uh, that are, I think. Uh, that uh, you can check the documentation for the other functions if you want to but I think there are some functions which you can use so now moving on to the next section I think I have six more minutes okay I'll just explain one concept maybe we'll be done for the session and maybe the other commands will be taken in the next session and uh, in the next session I'll also try to cover the first thing in the machine learning because that's why you are here for so now we got uh, we are using something called as aliases. This will be the last concept. I think everything gets repeated in computer science. We saw aliases in the Python when we saw import pandas as PD. So PD is an alias. So what alias is, it basically gives a temporary name to some column or some table. So aliases are some temporary names to columns or tables. So right now you, you just saw that we can uh, we are just querying the table but if you want to give some temporary name which uh, makes the which, which makes your table really readable so you can do that so what is the syntax of this so syntax is you can write select then you can write column name then you can write as this as is the keyword here this as and then you can write alias name this is basically whatever you want to give it and from table then you will write again same old friend from then the table name. This is the syntax that we have. So syntax is write the select, then the column name, and you can change the column name. This is how I can use the aliases in the column name. Let's suppose uh, I want to uh, change the first name to F name, or maybe just a name. So what I can do is, I can just write select. Okay, what I can write is, I can write select. Then I'll write, say, first name. First name. Okay, then I'll say as, I'll just say F and first name. And maybe I'll write the table name and stuff like this. So I'll explain you the concept of aliases because they're really important when we'll be going through some advanced concepts like joins and stuff like that. So bus, just remember one thing, this alias are the temporary names that we give to these columns and tables. Because these will be discussed in detail when we'll be going through the joins. I think there is only, I think, one hour discussion left for this SQL and we'll be done with the SQL. Okay, I'll just stop recording and I would like to chit chat with you for four more minutes that we have.